March 2020, the month that changed everything in tech. While the world was stocking up on toilet paper, the Federal Reserve was about to kickstart the wildest hiring spree Silicon Valley had ever seen. So what happened? Jerome Powell, facing an economy in freefall, made two massive moves, dropping interest rates to zero and turning on the money printer full blast. The stock market responded by smashing through record after record, unleashing a hiring frenzy unlike anything we'd ever seen. Companies weren't just hiring, they were throwing money at talent left, right, and center. Everyone shifted to remote work, Zoom became the new office, and tech workers were living what felt like a dream. Six-figure salaries, sure. Stock options, throw them in. Then November 2021 hit, and Powell pulled the plug on the party by raising the interest rates. In the aftermath, well, over 500,000 tech workers lost their jobs in the next three years. No wonder everyone is nervous Nervous about what 2025 might bring. By the way, if you're new here, Hi, I'm Suleiman. After spending a decade in tech, I now help businesses scale and secure the AWS infrastructure. And speaking of AWS, you want to stick around for job number three because they've just released some brand new data at their reInvent conference that you don't want to miss. So here is the good news. It looks like the tide is finally turning. Interest rates are dropping, the stock market is breaking records again, and tech companies are positioning themselves for a comeback that could rival the postmark. March 2020 boom. So the million dollar question. Suleiman, which roles are companies actually hiring for? Great question. But before we dive into that, go grab my beginner's guide to the cloud and join over 10,000 engineers accelerating their cloud career for free, link in the description. Now, the five most in-demand tech jobs for 2025, starting with number one, AI and machine learning engineers. The role that everyone has been talking about lately. Now, let me break down what this role actually looks looks like because there's a little bit of confusion out there. Now, you probably heard about NVIDIA's incredible run lately. Their stock has been soaring through the roof because their GPUs are powering pretty much every major AI breakthrough that we are seeing. But here is an important distinction. AI engineers aren't the ones building those GPU chips. That's the job of hardware and electrical engineers at NVIDIA. So what do AI engineers actually do. Now think about when you are prompting with ChatGPT. Behind the scenes, there's this massive AI system running on thousands of NVIDIA's GPUs. AI engineers are the ones who design these systems, write the code that trains them, and build the software that makes everything run smoothly. And this field is taking off. We are seeing a 38.4% growth year over year, with the global AI market expected to hit 305 billion by 2025. Why? Well, because every industry from healthcare to finance to retail has realized that they need AI expertise to stay competitive. And the best part is, even if you're just starting out, you're looking at a salary of $130,000. And with some experience, you can get over $200,000 in the US. You could become an AI research scientist developing new models, work as a computer vision engineer at companies like Tesla, where they are using neural networks for autopilot systems, or even step into emerging roles role of an AI ethics officer, making sure these technologies are developed responsibly. Now, I would say that's a little bit boring, but the option is there. Now, coming in at number two, we've got data analytics professionals. Remember that movie Moneyball? Now, if you haven't seen it, basically, Brad Pitt's character took this small market baseball team and completely transformed how they built their roster, all by looking at data. He ignored how players looked, what scouts were saying, you know, all that traditional stuff. Stuff. Instead, he just focused on the numbers. Which players actually got on base the most? Which ones scored the runs? The real measurable results. And it worked. They went on this incredible winning streak and changed baseball forever. Now, yes, that's just a movie, but data analytics professionals, that's a real job with surging demand. Take Starbucks. Notice how there seems to be a Starbucks exactly where you need one. That's not luck. That's data analysts at work. They're looking at things like foot traffic patterns, local demographics, competitor locations, and even weather data. And it doesn't just stop there. They're also figuring out which drinks to promote promote, when to promote them, how to price them, and how many baristas to schedule for a Tuesday afternoon. And here is the thing. This field is absolutely exploding. We're talking about growth from 7 billion in 2023 to 303 billion by 2025.
2030. Why? Well, because every company is realizing that without someone to make sense of their data, they're basically flying blind. And when you're just starting out, you can look at a salary of $80,000 a year and get a few years of experience under your belt. And now you are talking comfortably at over $120,000. Now with this skill, you can become a business intelligence analyst, turning complex data into easy to understand insights. Whether you're interested in sports, retail, healthcare, or tech, there's a company out there that needs someone who can translate what their data actually means and how to take advantage of it. All right, number three on our list, cloud engineers and architects. AWS, the biggest cloud provider, just dropped some mind-blowing stats at their reInvent conference. But before we get to that, let me explain what cloud engineers actually do. You know how you can open Netflix on any device and anywhere in the world and it just works? Or how your Instagram photos appear instantly on your phone, even though they're not actually actually stored there, they are all running on the cloud. And cloud engineers are the ones making that happen. Now, in the old days, every company had to build and maintain their own expensive data centers in physical locations. Now, companies can just rent exactly what they need from AWS, which is Amazon or Azure from Microsoft. Cloud engineers design these systems that billions of people use every single day, making sure everything stays up and running while keeping your data safe and secure. Now, let me share the latest numbers from AWS reInvent. Worldwide, cloud spending is set to hit $1 trillion in 2025, and companies aren't slowing down. 94% of them are planning to invest even more in cloud services next year. Now, here is the interesting part. By 2025, we're looking at a shortage of 6 million cloud professionals. Nearly two-thirds of companies, 64% to be exact, are already struggling with the cloud skills gaps in their teams. And when companies Companies are desperate for talent, they are ready to pay top dollar. Even when you're just starting out, you're looking at $90,000 to $110,000. Get some experience under your belt and you're comfortably earning over $150,000 or more. And the best part, the shift is happening across every industry, from healthcare to retail to sports to entertainment, because pretty much everything is being deployed to the cloud now. And this isn't just a trend anymore. It's becoming essential for every tech professional to understand and cloud platforms and cloud services. Now, having worked in tech for a decade and five years in the cloud, I've seen this transformation happen firsthand. And that's why I created my Cloud Engineer Academy, a 12-week roadmap to get you job ready as a cloud engineer. And I've walked this path myself, going from zero to landing a job as a cloud engineer in just three months. And don't just take my word for it. Go check out Jay's story. He switched from banking with no IT experience to cloud hired in just a few months. Link in the description. Next, let me tell you about security engineers, which is number four on our list. In 2025 and beyond, security has become an absolute necessity. The numbers prove it. We are facing a global shortage of 3.5 million cybersecurity positions by 2025, with 750,000 in the US alone. Everything needs securing, from AI systems to vast amounts of cloud data. Think about it. Every new technology creates new vulnerabilities. Those humanoid robots that Tesla is building they need securing. And the stakes are massive. Cybercrime is projected to cost companies 10.5 trillion globally by 2025, with the average data breach hitting $4.8 million. And what's even more eye-opening is that Gartner predicts over 50% of major security incidents will happen for one simple reason. There just aren't enough security professionals to go around. And this talent gap is creating a massive opportunity. Just look at the numbers. 61% of those organizations face cloud-related security incidents last year, while 58% of cybersecurity professionals admit their organizations are at risk due to skill shortages. And the biggest weakness, cloud security, with 30% of security teams saying is their biggest skills gap. Let me put that another way. Cloud security is the number one area where cybersecurity professionals feel least prepared. Talk about a perfect storm of opportunity. And that's exactly why companies are willing to pay so well. Well, entry-level positions start around $100,000 with experienced cloud security professionals earning more than $200,000. Now, if you're looking to break into this field as a beginner, you want to start with learning the cloud because that's where sensitive data and applications 
live. Then you wanna move into cloud security because it's an easier way to learn and it's a natural progression. And finally, number five, DevOps engineers. By the way, I used to work as a DevOps engineer and I've seen how software development has changed. And here is what used to happen. Developers would build software, then basically throw it over the wall to the operational teams and say, hey, here you go, go make it work. Now the operational teams would catch this code or these features or software they'd never seen before and somehow had to figure out how to run it reliably in production. Developers didn't care how their code would run in production and operational teams didn't understand why developers would build things in the way they did. And that's where DevOps came in. Those engineers are the ones who finally said, hey, maybe we should knock down this wall and get everyone working together. And it's worked so well that now 80% of organizations are practicing DevOps and the market is absolutely exploding. We're looking at hitting $25.5 billion by 2028 with no signs of slowing down. And about 76% of DevOps teams are using public cloud deployments. And just like I mentioned earlier, earlier, virtually every tech professional today needs cloud skills. This is especially true in DevOps because everything is being deployed to the cloud right now. And the adoption keeps growing because 74% of organizations either use DevOps or plan to use it soon with teams deploying their code faster and more reliably than ever before. Now, companies are investing heavily in automation and upskilling their DevOps professionals. As you can expect, the salaries reflect this demand. Mid-level DevOps positions exceed 120 thousand dollars with senior roles reaching beyond one hundred and eighty thousand dollars and if you're interested in the cloud then check out this video right here where i break down exactly how i was able to quit my job and land a new role as a cloud engineer in just three months